big question has always been football in a brand new South Africa. Remember that Nelson Mandela released in 1990. Where were you? That's the big question we always ask. Where were you at that time when you walked the walk? You fast track that and you talk about football that has been played in the new South Africa. What are the hopes? What are the dreams? It's being professionalized, but what are the outcomes? That is what we gather around here today to talk about, especially the success that each and every one of us still talk about till today, 1996, the class of 96. It doesn't get better than that because that's the biggest achievement we've ever had, believe it or not. Sitting with Stan season three gathers the brain's trust here today. And of course, the sir himself, the legend himself, the coach, the player, the father figure, Sir Stan Skrima Shabalala is here to introduce us to Imbizo Yanam Shanjibov. Spetan. That's Kalila. Edward Machens. Hello, I'm Ziva. German Yeah. When I give me that, none of you is stylish. Because when I see us, who can defend their cigars? I want to see Yeah, what? Edward Madumi. Yeah. It's hard and skillful. Yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, the fish himself. I don't know whether it's a salmon or whatever, but mud fish. Mud fish. One of the most fearless midfielder, right back, center half. This man. That's why I was saying earlier the injuries are not on the knees or ankles, the, knee, the, the, the injuries are on the face. Because <laughs> he, he was elbowed. Lee and I got the head, head, head battles, he will go in. Yeah. He was a fearless player. That's why even today, McFish is McFish. Everywhere you go, they know McFish. Nerenali Keith Broad, the other generation. Now, yeah. Well, yeah. Keith Broad, but this one, he generation him way, that even played for the national team. <laughs> <laughs> and by then, we, we had, of course, uh, our medical doctor, my friend, my brother from another mother, a, a, a football man, true and true. Yeah. Yeah, Nani Gitlarki in Encyclopedia, but you know, Encyclopedia of football. Yeah. We, we forever talk football, nothing here. We talk football. So, uh, welcome. Thank you very much. Dr. Ramakisila. Thank you. Yeah, we, we really respect your knowledge of football. Thank you. Never mind the injections. <laughs> yeah. 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 The good injections. Yeah, yeah the good injections. I think it's, it's going to inject some spice today because the kind of conversations lead exactly to where Dr. Victor has taken the national teams mm -hmm. uh, here in South Africa, but also just the love of the game. Uh, these are household names in terms of on the field and international exposure. Yeah. But for you, it's to track back and say your connection with their former team, Jomo Cosmos, your connection with the man himself, Matsudele Ephraim Jomoson, also speaks volumes of your, your love and your desire for the game. Just to paint a picture for us about what, what led you into the space of football and the love of the game and the in-depth knowledge, like Kupra Stan says, that you have? I come from a, a family headed by a certain Brasai Ramatisil, yeah. who was a Breza at the time. Yeah. 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 Ever done blank angels in the farm. Yeah. So my love of football stems from that. So my yeah. home was a clubhouse. Uh, jerseys were washed there, meetings were held there. Yeah. So when, when I came to being football, it was already part of my life. Yeah. Fortunately, unfortunately, I was totally useless at the sport. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I, I, I have the history, Brasden, uh, at, at yeah. med school. I had a club when I was at med school mm. called the uh, Volcano. Yeah. That was the team. And I had a few good players uh, there. There's a certain Dr. Stan Gate in Guatemala Springs, Dr. Mateo Kurat, and a few others. Good players in my team. So we're leading our op opponents 5 0, and then we got a penalty. And, and uh, then they got me to change. Uh, from the task nine to come in and, and score that penalty so that, you know, yeah. I, can, yeah. I can have my name on the scoreboard. Right. I hit that ball 
It never reached the goalkeeper. Yo! <laughs> Yo! <laughs> Row 52. Yeah. No, it, it, it was not strong enough. <laughs> <laughs> not even. No, it was so, not strong enough. So I was enough. totally yeah. useless in the sport. But I think <laughs> as I grew up, I, I, I wanted to get involved in the sport. And yeah. this is what drove my visit to a certain Mr. Ephraim Matsidele Son mm. to his offices in 1987. Mm -hmm. I walked into his office and I was newly qualified doctor, two years into the profession, and I said, I want to work for your team. And he says, no, I don't have money. I said, no, 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 you're my husband. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 no, 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 worry, no, 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 don't worry. Don't worry. I, said, I said to him, I will look after your team free of charge. I will come to training sessions free of charge. I will pay myself to travel to away games. And I'll look after your players in my surgery, which was in Katlehog, and then Cosmos mm -hmm. were training at the a primrose, uh, yeah. just in Germany. Yeah. And Jomo said to me, but why would you do this? I said, yeah. two things. I said, number one, I don't have experience. Yeah. And I'm going to use your team to gain the experience that I need because I want to be a sports physician. But number two, I believe, and this is 1987, I believe, Mr. Sono, that in our lifetime, yeah. South Africa will be readmitted into international football. Right. And when that happens, we are going to have to formulate a national team as a country. And when that happens, I want to be ready to be the team doctor for that team. Oh, 100%. And he said, what? Yeah. <laughs> you got to be out of your mind. I said, you watch. Yeah. And I thought, that's exactly what yeah. happened. Yeah. Sure. No, sure. So you were yeah. already thinking ahead. Absolutely. Yeah. Yours was not about the here, the now, the being mesmerized by the icon of football, which is Jomo Sonu. You're saying, yes, I want to use that team, you know, using it advisedly, but I want to utilize the opportunity presented to me to do this. But you're already thinking, you know, we have to come out of, you know, the sporting ban. Mm -hmm. FIFA are going to be, well, you know, re The correction is that I was not utilizing any opportunity. I created the opportunity. Yeah. And this is what I tell youngsters all the yeah. time. Mm -hmm. Don't wait. Make the sacrifice. I made the sacrifice. I paid. I treated the players free of charge. And I had a very good relationship. All of yeah. these guys, they found me at Cosmos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And today I have all of these relationships because I've been in the sport for that length of time. Right. She's an irony yeah. is that they all ended up at Bafana Bafana. Jomosana ended up at Bafana Bafana. Uh -huh. He ended up at Bafana Bafana. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You were there. I mean, you led yeah. against Cameroon at Kings Park Stadium Squad. when we had watched yeah. them play. 7th the of Cup, July, so. 1992. Yes. Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> you know, our first international. It was my yeah. dog, it, it's true. It was my doctor at Cosmos, my doctor at the national level. Yeah. Mm. But, but can, I, can I mention something less? It remains unsaid. Yeah. These guys, Edward Mutali specifically, John Tlali, uh, I mean, we did not play any of the matches in 1996. But I'll tell you, to, for the morale of the team, for the singing and all the motivation, I want to give these guys. Nobody has ever thanked you publicly, my mm. to Mitch. And Don't I think you me. two guys have done an excellent job. John Tyler led us in song. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. when, even when he was not in, in, the, the, in, team. in the team, yeah. but yeah. he kept the spirit going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think this is something that people must not forget about football. Yeah. It's so not it's about you being on the pitch. Yeah. Yeah. And then did you pass all your medical tests? The, the yeah, tests, no, he, he used to look after us because I used to motivate, like joke around the whole yeah. day, the whole night. Sometimes I lose my voice and they will give me some injection. I don't know the name of that. <laughs> yeah, it's the voice, what, what the injection. Remember that the treatment yeah. room <laughs> was, was the headquarters of, yeah. of the team because yeah. every player comes through the treatment room in one form or another. Yeah. Even those who are not injured, they come for their daily mass massages, you yeah. know, yeah. Um, all of that. So, so we used to sit there right up to 2 a.m., 3 a.m. Yeah. because we chat, we talk, the guys who play overseas share their experiences. Mm -hmm. They also want to know what is happening back. And it's amazing how guys mm -hmm. like Shoes and Steve Compella were always eager to know and understand what is happening back home because when you're away playing in Europe, we got very little contact yes. with, with what is happening. In but, but, but Fish, when, when, you, when you look at the build-up to the formation of national teams, um, I mean, Doc talks about the initial Bafana team that went to Kings Park. Um, as players, knowing that we're going to be back in international football, what kind of motivation was that to you, specifically, to say, are you prominent enough, are you working hard enough for you to gain that recognition to go and represent your country? Sure, I think it's, um, you know, listening to it, and as you said, it was July 92, so I think yeah. I, um, 92, I think, Probably August was somewhere assigned for, uh, for, for Cosmos. Cosmos. Yeah. So I just knew. And obviously, yeah. 
Uh, it elevates you as a, as a footballer, knowing that we're back in world football and we, you have the opportunity if you um, can do the, you know, work hard and, mm. and commit it to your, to your job as, as a footballer that you can probably um, and hopefully um, represent your national team. Mm. And uh, I, <clears throat> I had an experience where we, we did that and in 93 I had the call up. But before that, I was called up twice with the national team through Augusta Palacios. Uh, I travelled with um, the team to Mauritius. Mm. Um, I think that's when Pizzo, Pizzo scored. Yes, on, on, Pizzo on, on debut. On debut. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it was me and Brendan Augustine. Mm. And then the, the second game was uh, in Zambia. I roomed, I roomed with uh, Gardner Siali. But yeah. eventually, uh, I made my debut in Mexico. So it was seeing the players, learning from the, your players that you play with, mm. players that you play against, eventually working hard enough to get into the, the you know, and get into the national team. Mm -hmm. um, I think I would, I think Jomo specifically was a little bit confused because when I eventually made my debut in Los Angeles against Mexico, I think I went on as a midfielder, then I was left back and right back and eventually Jomo after the game called me and said, what position are we playing? I said, I just played where if I was told to play, so yeah. um, it was a, it was a weird experience. We lost four 0 but it was a, um, you know I had had an experience of uh, a couple of months being in different squads and going mm -hmm. into that um, whether winning or obviously you'd like to win, mm -hmm. but the experience playing against Mexico in Los Angeles um, was something that um, I wouldn't have dreamed, and that's '93. Yeah. I wouldn't have dreamed, you know, a year later, a year later that I'm actually debuting for my for my country, doing something. <laughs> How old, how old were you then? How old I was 19. 19? Yeah, but, but I'm, I'm, I'm wondering why you're asking that question, because I think when you started off the national team, and a lot of people people, people don't realise that you're actually the first coach of, mm. the, of Bafana Bafana. Mm. Yeah. yeah, practically. Yeah, and the record must stay there. Yeah. But I think one of the things that you did very well was that you, you rewarded form. That was the first thing. Players who were on form mm. were almost guaranteed a mm. call-up. Right. Yeah, but yeah. secondly, I think from your successes of the Bian and Shushan days at Sundowns, you had you had a firm belief that there is a South African way of playing football. Yeah, yeah. football, football is an international sport and everything else. And a lot of people thought we are naive and not not exposed to what was happening global. But if you look at what won us the Cup of Nations eventually in 1996, was because in the final analysis, we played football in an international environment, but in the South African way. Yes. And I think yeah. that is what is lacking too. Yes, sure. Mm. Yes, sure. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's, there's a lot of players that are, mm. that are made to play and, and compromise certain basic skills that they yeah. have. Whereas football is always steeped in basics, trapping the ball, controlling the ball, passing the ball, shooting the ball. Right. Those are basics. Yeah. But there's a South African way of playing football. Yeah. And yeah. This was deep in how you yeah. develop Bian and Shushan. You right. took a lot of players right. at Sundowns. You converted a few of them. You converted Mike and Dombella from a midfielder, central midfielder, to a left back. Right. You converted um, uh, Brix Mdau from, yeah. from a left back to a central defender, and a few other players that you converted. Yeah, right. and, yeah. and eventually they played very comfortably, very attractive and effective football. Yes. We don't have that. Today. No. no.